Most of those involved in the Flores murder trial were under a court-imposed gag order, but once the verdict was handed down, that order was lifted. I sat down with Prosecutor Chris Pavrell and District Attorney Investigator J.T. Camp to get their perspective on the case. Even after 25 years, countless hours of investigation and multiple search warrants, the case against Paul Flores was largely based on circumstantial evidence. Prosecutor Chris Pavrell says even though they didn't have a body, what they did have was multiple people who'd interacted with both Kristen Smart and Paul Flores, and they'd waited years to be able to tell their stories to a jury. Forensic cases. Forensic cases can be uh, clinical and unemotional, uh, but this one you had people who had, who had held on to uh, guilt and other feelings for decades and years, um, and that helped convey to the jury that Kristen Smart didn't just run off, but that she was dead. And so in, in some ways, having that type of direct evidence um, became more impactful, especially with the passage of time. It's what made this case so complicated, slowly building enough evidence to get a conviction, but never quite getting that big break. In terms of um, the evidence we had and what we were able to present, um, I think looking at it as a giant jigsaw puzzle, we got the pieces that we needed and they were presented and it came out in court as it should have been, as we'd hoped. JT Camp is an investigator working in the district attorney's office. He was assigned the case in 2021 to help tie any loose ends together along with cold case detective Clint Cole from the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office. For us, it was pretty unique. Uh, I was assigned uh, on a temporary basis um, to the sheriff's office at the time. So I was a DA's office employee, but assigned to the sheriff's office. I'm working uh, a collaborative effort there, so it ended up being a really good opportunity to have direct access to the sheriff's office, um, their resources, the reports, and Detective Cole, but also having a, a foot at the DA's office and having direct contact with um, Chris and whatever resources we needed at our office. Pavrel was also a relative newcomer to the case. He isn't originally from the area and only heard about Smart's disappearance after his wife started listening to the podcast, Your Own Backyard. When Pavrel got the chance to work on the case, he agreed knowing it would be a commitment, but had no idea that commitment would turn into two plus years and a temporary move out of the county to Salinas. Once it came to trial, he says he was ready. I wasn't concerned when we got to trial because I knew I had the truth on my side. Um, and I knew that was going to carry the day ultimately once the jury saw the truth. So there was never a point when I was uh, particularly concerned. Um, now that being said, there was also never a time when I said I had it. Because when you have 12 jurors, all of whom bring their own perspectives and their own life experience, you just never know what decisions they're going to make. Even without a body, he says the evidence was there. There isn't anything you're leaving out. Nothing. 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 Nothing at all. Nothing at all. You're not leaving it out just because you're afraid we'll think you're there's, a suspect. There's nothing I remember that I, you know. I can tell you for me that the two most impactful pieces of evidence were Paul's videotaped interview from June of 1996, which I think was the best evidence in the case. Um, I found it to be uh, just really a glimpse into a 19-year-old with zero remorse. Um, uh, like I said in sentencing, a true psychopath who just didn't care that Kristen was missing and that her parents were looking for her and that the community was, was looking for her um, and who lied throughout that entire interview so in such a cavalier fashion, um, unlike every other human who was involved in this case who <laughs> did what they could to try and find uh, Kristen. Um, then the second piece of evidence was the grave site underneath the deck at 710 White Court. Um, once uh, blood was found in that grave site, to me, I was, I was convinced I, I was ready to convict Paul Flores for murder. In the end, that evidence was enough to convict Paul Flores of first degree murder, but was not enough to convince a separate jury that his father Reuben was guilty of helping him cover up the crime. Both Pavrel and Camp agree that split verdict and the fact Kristen's parents are still without their daughter's remains are their biggest regrets. Yeah, I, I think it's all the emotions. I think it was the relief. Um, I think there's satisfaction. Um, you know, of course, I think there's a little sadness and disappointment um, with the split verdict and the fact that, you know, we still strive to find where Kristen is. So it's it's kind of the, the entire spectrum of, of feelings that, um, you know, it was a huge undertaking. 
The trial ultimately ended with career changes for both Pavrell and Camp. Pavrell is now the lead investigator for Monterey County DA's office. Camp has been promoted to an administrative role within the district attorney's office. I obtained and read through the pre-sentencing report as well for Paul Flores. It was prepared by the probation department after speaking with Flores following his conviction and graded the 46-year-old on the likelihood that he'd re-offend, scoring him in the medium risk range. For more on that report, you can head to KSBY.com.